Uh, so to an unfortunate story, um, for those of you, of, of course, who've been on social media, you would be aware that um, Impala Utility Park, Richard Sidindi, passed on uh, last week on Monday in unfortunate circumstances. Um, we want to remember him as somebody who was very, his work ethic, um, somebody who rose from close to nothing, having started his rugby career at St. Mary's Yala, and then uh, moving on to Kisumu RFC, where he was for about five, six years. And Peter Ndwati, who was the chairman of uh, Resolution Impala, Saracens at that time, uh, went to Kisumu and found somebody who was hooking sweets at Kondele Market, uh, brought him back to Nairobi, and he's formed an integral part, or he did form an integral part of Impala for the last seven or so years. A very talented player, uh, deployed in the number 15 and number 14 positions in the 15th game, and at sweeper in the 7th game. And we joined the rugby fraternity in uh, Morning Richard Sidindi, uh, a gentleman of the game, uh, a hard worker, and his family, all we can say is that uh, may he rest in peace and I uh, believe the rugby fraternity, fraternity sorry, is going to be in this. Uh, just a, by the way, for the people who are watching this, of course there's a pay bill that has been set up by Impala Club uh, for Richard Sidindi's uh, funeral contributions. And the pay bill number is, uh, the business number that is, is 945400 and the account number is GST197. In case you missed it, that should be running at the bottom of your screen right now. Contribute whatever you can to make sure that the family um, is able to meet their needs when sending him off. On behalf of the Three Quarters Podcast, all we say is that thank you very much for gracing the game, uh, Richard Sidindi. Thank you very much. Um, for the moments that you gave us on a couple of times. You are the bad man of the week. Uh, and may you rest in peace. part two of Africa's premier sports video podcast, The Three Quarters Podcast. Also remember to jump onto the hashtag 3QP to let us know what your sporting interests are. I'm Dumi Wendafield. And I'm Ngara Kamuya. So we start off with Badman yes. of the week. Mm-hmm. Um, and for me, a few people stood out. Mm-hmm. On the Mwamba side, I would have said Greg Ocheng mm-hmm. played very well. Mm-hmm. Um, we also had Eugene Zioka who came on as a substitute scrum half. Mm-hmm. He played, like he definitely made a difference um, in the way that uh, Mwamba was playing, getting the ball out on time. Yeah. Um, then we had Tony O'War. Yeah. Tony, <laughs> I think, I don't, I think moving to Mwamba was a good move. Yeah. Like he seems to have settled in well. Yeah. Um, you know, I remember a time when you used to look at Tony Onyango and Tony O'War and guys are like, Tony, and you're like, which one? Hey. Ah, Ulewa. <laughs> you know, but now yeah. you, can, you can tell the difference between the two. Yeah. So, you know, he played very, very well. Yeah. But my uh, bad man on the day mm-hmm. was honestly the only person who stood out for me on the Harlequin side, mm-hmm. and that is Eden Aguero because, <laughs> uh, no, I mean, he was the only person who stood out for me because yeah. Um, you could tell, like, once he was subbed off, mm-hmm. we didn't actually realize he was off, yes. but we realized the impact it made. Yeah. And I, I was just like, wait, wait, something's not happening with yes, the back. So, something yeah. is not happening. Uh, so he, he's one of the few attacking fly halves. Fly halves, have. yeah. And he creates opportunities, like, you know. Like, so, no. Uh, yeah. So. The reason I'm laughing is because I think in all the games Eden has played in, he's been the standout player for yeah. Queens. Uh, in fact, the Queen's home games, I'm laughing because he always has to drink the man of the match drink after the game because all the teams are nominating him for being the man of the match. Um, yep. So I'm not shocked. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah he's my, I mean, he didn't complete the game, but yeah. you could you could feel the impact the, when he was gone. Yes. So that's my man of the match. Okay. Um, so we move on to the shorter version of the game, yeah. and that is Kenya Sevens. Uh-huh. Uh, went to Vegas. 
Uh, interesting performance. Yeah. Uh, lost to USA, 10-26. Yeah. Uh, lost to France, 7-31. And then they beat Argentina in a spirited effort, 24-19. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh-huh. um, in the Challenge Trophy quarterfinals, played against Japan. Yeah. Uh, beat Japan 28-15. Yeah. And then later on tonight, they'll be playing in the semifinals uh-huh. against Spain. Yeah. Um, so what do you think of that performance? And uh, how do you think he'll do against Spain? By the time, of course, this episode drops, you'll know what happens. But yes. <laughs> um, I do think they're going to beat Spain. Um, at the end of the day, what I always say about this seventh team is that these guys are doing the best they can with what they've been given. So we can no longer make noise. Uh, we know where the problem is, and the problem is not the technical bench, the problem is not the players. Um, and these guys bleed their hearts out each and every um, time they go out on those legs. Not the performance would have wanted. I mean, USA have been people who have been competing with in the past. Uh, France are people who have been whooping in the past. Um, so going down to those two, of course, you know, guys asking questions. Then beating Argentina and beating Japan. But what I want to note is that majority of this squad were first-timers um, when the series started in November. But we're seeing what the exposure is now doing. They're getting better tournament by tournament. These guys are now exposed to the international stage, not to the level of the guys who are, you know, are not playing, but they're exposed now to the international level and they are able to you know, choke up this win. So it's just a matter of time. Um, it's just a matter of time. And like we keep on saying, them, you know, when the impasse is resolved, then we have a larger pool of seven players which is very good for the game, I think. Yeah, I love the confidence that I'm seeing, you know, in the likes of Vincent Sonyala, Daniel Tabu. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, someone gets a quick ball, scratch, run, yeah. you know, against people who are much more, let's just say physical. Mm-hmm. Like, you, you compare the two and you're like, Oof. Yeah. like, why, he thought he could go, and he <laughs> went through. Yeah. So I'm loving the confidence I'm seeing in the boys. Yeah, um, it, all in all, it's a, good, it's a good effort from the guys, and we have to give them props for that. Yep. Yeah. Uh, now we move on to a scandal. <laughs> What? Yeah. Oh, right. I was no. like, wait, what's so funny? No, yeah. I'm just so, laughing because of the number of scandals. Yeah. Well, I know, right? Yeah. Um, so uh, it's an article basically that's been doing rounds mm-hmm. um, criticizing uh, Humphrey Kayange and mm-hmm. his brother Collins and Jera, um, or basically, you know, fooling the game, fooling the union, mm-hmm. fooling the players, and fooling everyone, yeah. let's just say. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, it, it, it's by Cyprian Yakundi, mm-hmm. who is no longer on Twitter. Yes. Um, <laughs> you know, because of such stories, yes. but anyway. So um, he says that, you know, guys. Just look at this. Um, apparently, he has you know very good sources at the union. Mm-hmm. And he's like, so Collins and Jerry is leading you know other senior players to not play, and you know they're not going to accept whatever salary they're being given, mm-hmm. and they want it back to like one hundred and seventy thousand. But at the same time, you know he's accepting deals. Mm-hmm. He's you know brand ambassador for NRG. Mm-hmm. He's still traveling. Mm-hmm. He's in you know Vegas as we speak. Yeah. Well, yeah, as yeah. we speak, his yeah. brother is playing on the team. So yeah. he's like, hang on. Why is he telling everyone else not to play? Mm-hmm. You know, and they don't have the same sort of um, reach that he does or the pull that he does. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, for brands to come and snap them up. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so there's all that hullabaloo. Yeah. Um, you know, some people saying that they, they they know who the source is at the union and this is how this person speaks. Yeah. But what do you think of that whole debacle? First, uh, it's very annoying. It's very irritating that rugby has gone into this point where you have insiders leaking such stories uh, just to get political mileage because I believe that's what the issue is. Guys are trying to gain political mileage, number one. Number two, um, if if indeed we are going to be, that's a decision, um, what's the word? That's the part you want to take. Yeah. Uh, I believe you should, I mean, check your facts a bit because uh, there's some, th- some things that don't add up. You know, when they're saying William Baker turned down the salary to go earn 25,000 shillings at Halifax, that's false. When you talk about the salaries being cut from 170 to 100,000, that's false. We know that the salaries were cut to 45,000 shillings, and that was the main reason why these guys left. Number three, uh, and if Cyprian Yakundi had been in the rugby circle, he'd have been able to realize that this is not the first time. Collins and Jera has been on the scene for the last 13 years or so, in sevens. This is not the first time that they're having a problem with regard to cash, <laughs> and he's been he's played. All those times there's been issues to do with cash, he's played. So there must be a deeper issue on this one. And if I'm a responsible journalist, I think I'd be able I'd be digging on that rather than just pushing yeah. stories on behalf of someone. But the biggest issue for me here is why because clearly this is coming from somebody in the union. Why are guys catching feelings of the fact that 
he got to deal with energy. Yeah. Because, I mean, it's him. That's his hustle. That's his hustle. Yep. It's a... Uh, and, 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 and that has come as a result of what he's done on the pitch and the way he carries himself. So when, when energy won't associate with him, this is what we keep on talking about. I mean, players being brand ambassadors. Mm -hmm. Maybe you guys actually, the union, if you guys had your, I was going to use a bad word, yeah. but if you guys had your stuff <laughs> yeah. set up, mm -hmm. then you'll be able to push up these things with corporates, right? Get all these guys associated with these top brands. Mm -hmm. So if energy won't take Colin Sinjara to Las Vegas on a fully paid trip, what what's your problem? Yeah. What's your, it's not like when Colin Injera dons the jersey playing for Kenya, or it's like he has in the past. Mm -hmm. It's not like he's butchered. It's not like he's intentionally performed badly to hurt the Kenyan team. No, mm -hmm. he hasn't done that. He's been at the top of you know uh, at the top in the last what, thirteen years mm -hmm. or thereabouts. So look, it, this it's hogwash. If you ask me, this this noise people are making about Energy Radio taking him to the states, it's crap. Uh, let's focus on the real issues and, and there's nothing wrong with Colin Sinjara being approached by a corporate brand to go to Las Vegas. He's doing that in his individual capacity. He's not doing that as a member of uh, the Sevens team. He's not doing that as a member of the union. He's doing that as Colin Sinjara yep. in his individual capacity. NRG has approached him because of the pool he has and for a corporate it's return on investment. Yep. When people see Colin Sinjara in Las Vegas, then you want to follow energy. I will not lie by the dummy man. <laughs> that is the only reason I started yep. following energy. True, true. Because Actually, I didn't it, even bother with them before. I didn't bother with them before, yep. but when I saw Collins and Jerry and this thing on Las Vegas, yep. together with DJ Case, uh, Andrew Kibben, Kamen and Goro, I was like, oh, maybe I want to see. But it was not because of the three of them. Sorry, Case and, and the rest. <laughs> you know, yeah, but it was no. not because of the three of them. It was yep. because of Collins and Jerry. So yep. it's return on investment. Come on, guys. Let's stop making noise. Yep. Let's focus on what the real issues are. However, I mean, just before we move on, I feel like, in as much as, you know, yes, I completely uh, back what you're saying, mm -hmm. but, you know, just looking at the flip side of the coin, if he is, you know, telling uh, senior players, oh, don't play him, you're a grown, you're a grown up. Thank so you. So <laughs> you have, like, it's on you to yes. decide whether you want to play yes. or you don't want to play. Yes. People can't sit there and say, Colin Zajara told them not to play. Yes. At the end of the day, if you know, you know, who is feeding you, mm -hmm. what is feeding you, mm -hmm. you will decide what to do. You will decide what so, to do. So, you know, I don't think we I can mean, go out there. I mean, he tells you to jump into the fire, we'll jump. <laughs> anyway. Yes, so moving on. on. Yes. <laughs> we had Super Rugby uh, Match Day 3. Yes, Match Day 3, the results for Match Day 3. The Lions losing to the Bulls 12-30. The Sharks uh, losing to the Stormers 11-16. The Aguares beating the Blues 23-19. The Reds losing to the Crusaders 12-22. Uh, yeah, that's that's that. <laughs> All right. Uh, and this is how the next match day will look. Yes. We've got hu Hurricanes versus Highlanders, mm -hmm. Rebels versus Brumbies, mm -hmm. uh, Crusaders versus Chiefs, mm -hmm. Blues versus Sunwolves, Waratahs versus Reds, and Lions versus Haguaris. Oh, one more yes. Bulls versus Sharks. That's true. Um, so for the guys who are on Super Rugby and uh, all this Super just predicting <laughs> right yeah uh, that's you should you should you should get onto it it's pretty fun i mean guys normally send their reports at the end of yeah. the week yeah yeah so <laughs> before we wrap it up mm -hmm. we're looking at the world league yes. so there's this new uh proposed mm -hmm. uh it's still you know in discussions mm -hmm. but a 12 team world league format mm -hmm. basically to start in 2020 mm -hmm. and um so you know you all play a game for you know you, like 12 games yeah. basically yeah. in the year then the semi uh, sorry the finals rather mm -hmm. will be like towards the end of the year yeah. november yeah. in december of yeah. course, there's a lot of hullabaloo. Yeah. Very many people are like, no, we, we don't like this. Yeah. There's some teams that will be excluded. Some people feel like the players will be overworked. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of sort of negative talks, um, you know, towards it. Mm -hmm. Guys are like, I don't think it will work. Mm -hmm. Some people are saying this is just greed. Mm -hmm. But what do you think? Uh, actually, it's going. The, uh, USA and Japan are going to join the rugby championship, making it a 12 team because of the six nation teams. Yep. Now, um, the reason for why they're doing this is because of the, but just about to resign a broadcasting deal. And that's why uh, they're attracting these two teams and making it a league uh, with the 12 teams to increase the money that's getting into rugby. Mm -hmm. And I just want to wrap up with, by saying what Kieran Reid, New Zealand captain, said, and he sits on the Interna International Rugby Players uh, Council. Uh, Kieran Reid has said that while it is good because of the money coming into the game, uh, let's keep the integrity of the game mm -hmm. and the integrity of the players. Yep. And he's saying that fans do not want to watch a lethargic, fatigued players. And having me play 12 or so many tests in a year and it's high intensity, then definitely means I'm going to be backing at some point. So I think World Rugby needs to think about this a bit more. 
while it's good for the money, we also need uh, what you keep on saying, commercializing of sports. Yeah. Uh, don't focus too much on the money. Sports is entertainment. Let's not lose the entertainment. Part. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And of course, we'd love to hear what everyone else thinks about that. You know, if you don't know, now you know. Yeah. Tell us what you think. Remember, you can find us on social media. That is by following us on Instagram, liking our page on Facebook, and subscribing to our YouTube channel. I'm Dimi Modafi. And I'm Naraka Muya. See you in part three.